Our study was about uh, baseline quality of life as a prediction of overall survival in patients with aggressive lymphoma. At both Mayo Clinic and University of Iowa, we approach all patients who come to our institution with a new diagnosis of lymphoma and ask them per to participate in a prospective epidemiology study of patients with lymphoma. We ask them if they're within nine months of their initial diagnosis. At the time of enrollment, we ask them a series of questions. One of them is a quality of life measure called FACT-G. It's a general measure of uh, cancer patients' quality of life, and we know that it's valid to use in patients with lymphoma. We also ask them a simple one question, how is your quality of life on a scale of zero to 10? And also, how is your spiritual quality of life on the same scale? Then we followed the patients and we saw how they did. We actively monitored them and measured their overall survival. And then we were able to analyze that their quality of life at baseline was predictive of overall survival. One important thing that, that uh, we did in our analysis is looked at those patients who uh, reported a clinically deficient quality of life score, and that's based on previous literature. So if you have a 100-point scale, anyone who reports a quality of life as, as less than 50 is considered deficient. And so we compared those patients to those who had a better quality of life above um, 50, and we found that that really separated two groups of patients for survival. So that's something that clinicians can use as a cutoff when they see patients at diagnosis. I think the next step is trying to determine how can we improve patients' quality of life. If we identify a patient with a poor quality of life, you know, first of all, the, understand why is it low? There's many different aspects of quality of life. And if there's some sort of intervention we can do to improve that person's life, um, then the next step is studying, does that intervention actually translate into improved patient outcomes? And in hematology and oncology, we're moving towards some of these interventions already, such as the integration of palliative care in patients who are on chemotherapy simultaneously for their malignancy. Uh, so I think we'll see more of this type of research in the future.